We live in a time where we have extraordinary access to information. The internet, iPads, online media, broadcast media, radio, television. The information that's available to not just Americans, but uh, citizens all across the world is extraordinary. And the access to information is uh, unsurpassed. Given that, it's extraordinarily ironic how uninformed so many people are distracted by the internet, the Kardashians, football, professional sports. Paying attention to these sorts of things which are utterly irrelevant while in front of us the most dire circumstances and tragedies are occurring every single day. I'm most concerned with the violation and desecration of our most basic constitutional rights with an alarming frequency. Um, our rights to due process are being attacked like never before because we do not have a judicial system which has an ability to withstand the assaults that our judicial system takes every single day. Here in the state of Florida, the entire state judicial budget is funded by less than 1% of the uh, state budget in general. I find it particularly appalling that my judicial system has to go hat in hand to the legislature and to a governor who has shown an absolute uh, unwillingness to recognize and respect the rule of law to request that this executive and the legislative branch provide temporary funding on an ad hoc basis for our judicial system. I want you to consider what that means the fact that in this state our court system doesn't function effectively or independently because it doesn't have the funding it needs to keep the lights on. Think about the conflict that that creates when perhaps a business community doesn't like the impact or the outcome of court cases and say foreclosures. You can hear the dynamic and the interplay in this conflict in some of the testimony regarding the bills that are being considered to deal with foreclosure. If you listen to the audio recordings and you read the uh, materials that are presented, particularly uh, recently in the Florida Senate's report on foreclosure, you will see uh, an obsession with uh, completing foreclosure cases. This insistence on concluding foreclosure cases uh, and the information that's included in those reports makes it clear that there is a desire to move these along regardless of the equities or regardless of the judicial process. The insistence of relying upon a non-judicial foreclosure process, which is the attempt being made in the Florida legislature right now, um, is another indication of how corrupted our system has become because our elected leaders, rather than caring to respect the rule of law are insisting a move towards non-judicial foreclosure. It's very interesting when you listen to the audio recording and you read the written materials, you'll hear the absolute frustration on the part of the senators when they're advised by Senate staff that new federal reg regulations, legislation, the Dodd-Frank Act in particular, um, would stand in the way of the Senate's attempts to turn Florida into a non-judicial foreclosure state. There's no video of it, but you can listen to the audio and you can hear the just disgust and frustration on the part of the Senators when they're told that this federal legislation will stand in the way of their attempts to railroad consumers and throw Floridians all across the state into a non-judicial foreclosure process. Another thing to keep in mind about this move towards non-judicial foreclosure is the fact that every single foreclosure in this state, at this, or every single mortgage in this state, uh, largely, contemplates a judicial process. If you read the foreclosure or the mortgage documents carefully, you will see that in this contract, drafted by the lenders and the banks, uh, the other party to the contract, that is the homeowner or the borrower, is explicitly given the right to a judicial process. The banks now, and the legislature, uh, want to ignore the fact that the banks, the institution, 
undoubtedly who had the better bargaining power in that contract, and, and frankly, who drafted it, explicitly provided for a judicial process. But again, the banks, and, and frankly, I think it's more the legislature now, wants to toss out those provisions of contract, to toss out those rights that were given to every borrower when they signed that mortgage, and allow them to be railroaded into a non-judicial foreclosure process where we will have even more desecration of basic rights. The second area of desperate concern that I find is the elimination of our right to be safe and secure in our homes and property. This too is a right given to us in the Constitution which states that no citizen shall suffer uh, any unreasonable searches or seizures. And while that's uh, directed specifically at government agencies and, and made to apply uh, and prohibit perhaps uh, government police officers from kicking down doors, we all have to be aware of the fact that banks and institutions across this country are in fact kicking down the doors of people's property, changing locks, sometimes removing property, and they're doing it with impunity. Um, again, the constitutional protections traditionally apply to government actors and agencies, but we have to consider the fact that in the vast majority of cases, the banks that are foreclosing are effectively institutions of the government. In as much as our government is backstopping the banks and the non-governmental entities, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the fact of the matter is that when the agents of these institutions are taking these actions, they are doing it with the impeter or some uh, shadow of authority of the federal government uh, or of government in general, particularly when this is done in the context of a foreclosure process. In cases where there is a foreclosure filed and it is uh, determined that one of these actors uh, acting on behalf of a bank or institution are taking attempts to secure property, if they are approached by law enforcement, they will assert that they are doing this on behalf of a bank or institution and that they are authorized to do so in the context of a foreclosure proceeding. Unfortunately, far too often law enforcement believes that this is the case and uh, when they do approach these banks or bad actors doing this, law enforcement will oftentimes just turn around and leave, leaving the homeowner there vulnerable and not protected at all. This happens far too often. As disturbing as it is in the context of a foreclosure case, it's far more disturbing when this occurs when no foreclosure is even filed. But this too happens with alarming frequency. And I want you to think about that very seriously. Understand that these banks and institutions are taking the perspective that they have the right to kick down your door, enter your property, change your locks, remove your personal property if they care to, with no notice, no phone call, no letter, no advance warning. They don't even need to ring the doorbell. Kick down the door. Change the locks. You're not in foreclosure. You have no notice. Yet this is the pers this is the perspective, this is the positions being taken by banks and institutions all across the country. Terribly, terribly disturbing. And finally, the First Amendment. When our founding forefathers sat down and drafted our Constitution, they provided the First Amendment. And in that First Amendment, they asserted that no citizen's right to speak freely or to organize shall be abridged, and yet all across this country it's being done in the most egregious, in the most aggressive ways. Obviously looking at Occupy we're seeing uh, paramilitary officers, I no longer call them police, when they're dressed in battle gear, when they're bearing their weapons against unarmed peaceful citizens, those are paramilitary forces. When they're doing this they are abridging our First Amendment rights, our rights to peaceably assemble our rights to protest. It's certain that this can be inconvenient for folks and that these protests can be messy, they can be loud, they can be distracting, but this is a right given to us by our forefathers. It's a right that should be jealously guarded. Citizens, consumers, activists, and attorneys are also under attack when they speak out, as I do, in blogs, in writing, in emails. We all need to be working together to protect that most basic right, the right to speak freely, the right to exercise your First Amendment rights.
And that's why I want to encourage everyone to uh, Google the Florida First Amendment Foundation and to understand the um, important mission of the Florida First Amendment Foundation. We're making a special challenge right now at the year end, asking attorneys and activists to support the mission and to make some donations to allow the Florida First Amendment Foundation to continue their work to make sure that you have access to um, government information, which is your property, to understand how Florida's Government of the Sunshine, Chapter 119 law works, and to understand what your First Amendment rights are. Please click on the link, follow and find the Florida First Amendment Foundation. Please make a donation to support it.